Tornadoes are one of the most violent and focused forms of severe weather. By definition, all a tornado is is a rapidly rotating column of air attached to a thunderstorm and in contact with the ground. You see, if that rotation doesn't extend all the way to the surface, we call it a funnel cloud. The major difference being that if a funnel cloud passes over an area, because that rotation doesn't reach the ground, there's not very much damage that will occur. Now, if we take the tornado and break it up into three categories, weak, strong, and violent, we could look at how long they last, how fast the winds are, the percentage of deaths that come from each category, also the percentage of tornadoes from each category, and finally, their size. Let's begin first with the weak. Weak tornadoes, which are your EF0, EF1, possibly even your EF2, typically don't last very long, maybe up to 10 minutes. They generally have wind speeds that are less than 120 miles an hour, and because of those slow wind speeds, they're responsible for only 5% of all the fatalities with respect to tornadoes. However, the one category I want you to make sure you memorize here is that 85% of all tornadoes are of this weak variety. So we're talking here about those that produce winds less than 120 miles an hour. That is your typical weak tornado. Now, when you look over at the last category, width, you see that a typical weak tornado may only have a width of about 100 feet. They can get a little bit bigger than that, but that's generally how wide they are. So this is a very focused path of destruction. Now, if we step that up to the strong category, these being your EF2, EF3 types of tornadoes, you can see they can last several minutes. Some have been even recorded to go up to an hour. Your wind speeds in these categories can get up to above 120 miles an hour, but are generally less than 200. Notice that the percentage of deaths jumps way up to about 25% of all fatalities coming from the EF2. EF3 variety tornadoes. But only about 13% of all tornadoes are of this category. Also notice that the width can get up to a quarter mile wide, and that's going to be quite sizable tornado. When you get up to your violent categories, the F4 and F5, or the EF4 and EF5, sometimes you can have long track, long lived tornadoes that can potentially last more than an hour. Now that's extremely rare, but there have been instances of tornadoes lasting that long. Wind speeds for your EF5s exceed 205 miles an hour. And what I want you to really see here is that only 2% of all tornadoes fall into this violent category, but they're responsible for 70% of the deaths. Finally, you can see that some of these tornadoes can get up to be as wide as a mile. The record was set back in 2004 in Halem, Nebraska. There was a tornado down there that was two and a half miles wide. And for those of us in Champaign, Illinois, that's like a tornado that would start on Florida Avenue or Kirby Avenue and stretch all the way to Interstate 74. Massive, massive tornadoes. The fastest ones we've ever measured, 318 miles an hour. That was in the Moore, Oklahoma, 1999 tornado. Tornadoes have also been found in very, very high altitudes. For example, in uh, Sequoia National Park on July 7, 2004, a tornado was reported along the side of a mountain at 12,000 feet in elevation. Now, while these are kind of the, the worst of the worst and, and the most extreme, let's talk about what an average tornado looks like. First, its size. On average, the diameter of the track of the tornado is somewhere between 150 feet to a half mile wide. The time that that tornado spins on the ground is typically only about 10 minutes, during which it can track about 4 miles. The average wind speed of a tornado is about 110 miles an hour, which gives it an EF scale ranking between an EF0 and EF1. The direction of movement for most tornadoes is typically from the southwest to the northeast at speeds approximately 30 miles an hour. So that's your average tornado. That is the one that fits into that category if there were 85% of all tornadoes are weak. So when we look at average tornadoes and we start to talk about watches and warnings and, and how these particular tornadoes can, can be so devastating, we want to first establish the average warning time in the United States. You see, we use a very advanced radar system accompanied by storm spotters, train storm spotters that help us to arrive at this average warning time of 13 minutes. One last thing to have you remember here, debris, stuff being thrown by the tornado is the number one killer. What's interesting was a few years ago I was reading an article and uh, this peer reviewed article talked about what would happen if you could lengthen the warning time. I found it kind of ironic to hear that if we were able to lengthen the warning time from, say, 13 minutes up to 40 minutes or 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, that this wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. It suggested that people would try to find other things to do during that extra time that they knew they had. So it's actually a very good thing that the average warning time is short. That way when the warnings go out and the sirens start to blare, people know that they've got to take shelter immediately and that there's not time for them to do other things. 
Very, very interesting article. So let's check out this chart which shows the number of fatalities from 1940 to 2004 directly blamed on tornadoes. You can see there's been some major outbreaks. One happened on New Year's Eve, we had one on Palm Sunday, we had the super outbreak of 1974. This was the day where we had 148 tornadoes in a single day. We had the May 2003 outbreak, which I know there's an error on the graph because in reality, there were over 500 confirmed tornadoes. And as you look at all these different major events, you can see that the number of deaths from them just jumps all over the place. On average, though, there are 57 deaths per year in the United States blamed on tornadoes, and it ranks second among all severe weather events over the last 30 years, second only to flooding. Since 1880, there have been 19,000 deaths in the United States, and the deadliest decade since the 1880s was the 1950s, where they recorded, on average, 140 deaths per year. When you look at this graph, though, you see that starting around the late 70s, early 80s, there aren't so many big events where you get as many as 300, 400, or 500 fatalities. This is not because there's been less tornadoes. This is simply a product of the fact that we've got more advanced warning systems, better education, heavy research, and the invention of our Doppler radar network. It is a combination of these things that have really helped bring the number of fatalities down. Now, this graph only goes back to 2004, but on April 28th and 29th, 2011, we had a record outbreak that killed more than 350 people down in Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. This particular outbreak now takes second place on the all-time deadliest single-day outbreak of tornadoes, second only to the March 1925 Tri-State Tornado, which killed 700 people in Missouri, Southern Illinois, and Indiana. Now, when we look at some other numbers here, we have a graph that's kind of embedded in this figure. It shows the cost per year going back from 1995 to 2003, showing us the average annual cost of tornadoes. These numbers come from the NOAA Economics webpage, and it suggests that on average, there's about $1 billion to $2 billion spent each year cleaning up after tornadoes. The most expensive tornado on record hit March 31, 1973. This tornado hit northern Georgia and cost $5.175 billion to clean up after. Now, one of the interesting things to do is to look at where these people were when they died from tornadoes. In this figure, you can see that 43.94% people that are killed in tornadoes are in mobile homes. About 25% are in permanent homes, and about 10% are in vehicles. Those are our three largest categories, mobile homes by far number one. When it comes to looking at the total number of deaths per state, we find that Texas is the number one. That's because Texas, in the middle of Tornado Alley, is a huge state and therefore a huge state with a large population and a large number of tornadoes gives you the most fatalities. However, if you take these statistics and normalize them by the size of the state, the state with the most fatalities per area is Mississippi. Following Mississippi is Arkansas, then Alabama, then Illinois, and finally Indiana. When you start to look at these states, what I want you to notice is the top state is actually not in the traditional tornado alley. So why are there so many deaths in Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama? As it turns out, there are about five good reasons why this part of the country sees so many fatalities. First, it's a very heavily forested area. And because of all these trees, it's very difficult to see tornadoes coming from a long ways away. Compare that to central Oklahoma. Oftentimes, when storms roll across the Great Plains, you're able to see them miles in advance and therefore easily get out of the way. Secondly, down in this part of the country, they get a lot of early season tornado outbreaks where they're caught off guard, and many of those tornadoes are during the nighttime. Third, these people in Tornado Alley, like those folks in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, well, they're very used to tornadoes, and they know how to take shelter, and they're very prepared. Also, they get a lot of later season tornadoes, those happening at the end of May and June and July. Whereas, down in Mississippi and Alabama and Arkansas, they often get tornadoes in February and March. One study actually suggested our fourth reason. It said that residents in this area lack a trust in general organized warning systems, like those from the government or the National Weather Service. This article is quoted by saying Southerners have a tendency toward fatalism, passivity, and a general lack of trust in organized warning systems. That's a direct quote out of this paper. In my personal opinion, when you start to look at why there are so many fatalities, especially in Mississippi and Alabama, it has a lot to do with low-income families. There are a lot of mobile homes, 
full of immobile people in this part of the world, people that are not able to get out of the path of a tornado and not able to escape. That combination is what makes this part of the country such a deadly area to be in with respect to tornadoes. Now, where does Illinois rank? We rank 7th on the total number of deaths, 4th on the total number of deaths per square kilometer, 7th on injuries, and 8th on cost. In Champaign County, we've had about 60 tornadoes since 1950, and the worst that we've seen is was an F4. So now that we've identified some places that you may not want to be in with respect to tornado fatalities, what are the safest states? Turns out the safest state to be in is Alaska, followed by Hawaii, then Vermont, then Puerto Rico, then Rhode Island, and Oregon. All of those states and locations have had fewer than 50 tornadoes in the last 50 years. As we mentioned a moment ago, the deadliest tornado outbreak in history happened in southern Illinois. It was called the Great Tornado or the Tri-State Tornado of March 18, 1925. As this tornado ripped across parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, it took as many as 700 lives. As this particular tornado crossed these three states, it did damage that the newspapers talked about for months. The picture that's on the right-hand side here is actually what a school looked like near Mur in Murfreesboro, uh, which had its outside walls and roof just destroyed. It takes incredibly fast winds to destroy strong, sturdy, brick-built buildings like this. But this, again, the deadliest tornado outbreak in U.S. history at 700 deaths. But in 2011, April 28th and 29th, we now have the second deadliest outbreak with over 350 deaths in parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. So what exactly is Tornado Alley? Well, Tornado Alley is this region